evening and welcome to the September uh, meeting of the Pitt County Board of Health. We'd like to uh, start the meeting off with a roll call of our uh, members, please. Tom Colson. Tina Dixon. Present. Martha Engelke. Present. Rex Fleming. Present. Adam Harrell. Present. Mark Hayes. Present. Scott McIntosh. Present. Natish Patadar. Kelly Pack Smith. Present. Lowell Spate. Present. Thank you. We have one. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, first of all, are there any uh, public comments? Okay, here you done. We'll move on to the minutes of our uh, previous uh, meeting in uh, back in August uh, the 11th. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes that have been distributed via email? So hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. That was Rex okay. Fleming. Okay. So who was the second? It's Kelly. Tina. It's Kelly. Tina. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, we'll uh, have uh, Betsy do the roll call. Martha Engelke. Aye. Adam Harrell. Yay. Mark Hayes. Yay. Scott McIntosh. Yay. Kelly Pack Smith. Yay. And Lowell Spate. Aye. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Move on to fiscal report. Marsha Hall. Good evening. Um, I am talking to you tonight about period two, which ended in August the 31st. Uh, we did have some budget amendments to the overall budget, $155,802. Um, that's all state funding from Department of Health and Human Services um, for four different three different programs and for COVID response. Um, that was added, bringing our overall budget to 12.476. Um, we did, if you move across our, our report, we do have um, our Medicaid's slightly down, which is um, to be expected during COVID and our response. Um, we also are down a little bit in our other category. However, we, um, just received some of the contracts for some of our programs that are outside of um, the typical state funding and I just invoiced about 45,000 today that we should see in September. Um, we did have a regular payroll month and so time and items considered we should have a surplus of $432,321. Very good. <clears throat> Any questions uh, from the board members? Silver Nell, any comments or? No, none on the none on the finances. Okay, all right. Uh, we need to prove this, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll allow. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you. All right. Betsy, we'll have a roll call for the approval. Was that second from Ms. Tina Dixon? Yes. Thank you. Rex Fleming? Yes. Adam Harrell? Yes. Yeah. Mark Hayes? Yes. Yeah. Scott McIntosh? Yes. Yeah. Kelly Pack Smith? Approved. Lowell Spate. Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. The uh, your report is approved. Do you have additional information for us? Well, um, at, in your email, you should have seen the our position status report. We have 25 vacancies as of the end of August in various um, various phases. Um, 
I guess Dr. Silverman, I might touch on that a little bit later, but we just wanted to keep you up to date with um, all of the, the positions. And we still, um, the last attachment, we had um, a review of all of our grants and the balance at the end of August was 457000 Some of those are um, through DHHS, some of them are local FDA, and um, it's a big part of our overall operation, but those are pretty steady and nothing seems out of the way with those. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. We're still trying to work through um, the Medicaid guidance that we get. It seems to be every day. Um, we have the, the commissioners approved the budget um, increase, not the budget increase, but the fee increase for some of the COVID-19 telehealth that you all approved last month. So that's been dropped in EPIC. Hopefully we'll see some of that funding. We have found that our clients are not really, um, they don't love Zoom or WebEx, but they will do a FaceTime visit with our postpartum nurses. So we've gotten our postpartum nurse an iPhone that um, she's able to see the baby and the mom, which it seemed to be working really well. Um, you know, we're in new territory, so we're having to kind of fly by the seat. Well, I guess we're building the plane as we're flying it. So um, hopefully we'll get back on track. We're still working on the Medicaid call study for last year. It's a huge document. Um, so we'll hope to get that um, submitted over to Stephen Gardner for his computation. Uh, Dentrix is up and running. We are having a little bit of issue on the Smile Safari bus. Um, when they download the x-rays, some of the x-rays were getting lost, and that's part of the DEXIS software. But uh, we're working with MIS to get um, a, pow a more powerful internet on the bus. The Smile Safari has not gone back into the schools yet. We're still waiting on, I guess, Pitt County Schools to get in their routine and how they consider that to be a critical service. We're um, kind of biding, biding our time a little bit there. But um, that's very busy. All right, very good. Do the board members have any questions uh, for Marcia? Well, as always, we appreciate your reports. So. Oh, thank you. We appreciate y'all. Items of old business. Okay, hearing none. Any items for new business before we head into the health director's report? Okay, Dr. Sevenel. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. Um, wanted to let you all know that I'm recovering well from my surgery. Appreciate uh, the night off last uh, last month. Um, would like to point out to you that Thursday will mark 12 and a half incubation cycles, or 25 weeks, since we identified the first case of COVID-19 in Pitt County. Uh, I want to thank all the Pitt County Health Department staff for your hard work through these 25 weeks of COVID time, um, and thank you for your work in our COVID-19 testing program. I know it's been a long, hot summer, and many of you have been out there sweating, and we do appreciate that. Um, our COVID numbers tonight I want to share with, uh, with the board. Our total case count um, as of noon today was 4,077. That represents about 2.2% of the Pitt County population having been infected over the past 25 weeks. Um, our estimated recovery as of today was 2,762. So right now about 68% of our cases have recovered. Um, when we uh, look at the number of active cases, meaning cases that are less than 15 days old, um, we get a number of 1,296 cases. And one of the things that I've been following in terms of activity, um, rates are always comparable, raw numbers aren't. Uh, Dr. Ramsey taught me that a long time ago. Um, when we look at our rate per thousand Pitt County residents, um, prior to the surge that we've experienced the last few weeks, we were running about 3.1 cases per thousand. Uh, today we're at 7. 0 0.0 cases per thousand, so a little more than twice where we were a few weeks ago. Our total fatalities, again, as of about noon today, were 19. If we take that and calculate a case fatality rate, we come up with 0 0.5. Uh, throughout the course of this, we've ranged from about 0.5 to 0 0.7 at the highest. Uh, we've been drifting down. We went from 0.7 a few weeks ago to 0.6 to 0.5. The unrounded numbers seem to be trending down a little bit, so I don't know if we'll get below 0.5. 
Um, there's good news and bad news in that. That means that you know a half a percent of our folks who get this do do pass away from the infection or die of the infection, but it also means that 99.5 percent of those who get the infection survive. Uh, so. So there's sort of the optimist or pessimist way of, uh, of looking at the, the case fatality rate. Um, right now, our, our percentage of testing returning positive is 12.8%. We had been stable in the 6 to 7% range um, since about the third week of April prior to the surge that we had here the last, last couple of weeks. Um, but we are on our way back down. At one point in our internal testing, we were up to 17% uh, positive uh, in our testing returns. At this time, I continue to work closely with ECU Student Health Services, ECU Prospective Health Service on student faculty uh, and staff COVID issues. Uh, I also speak, meet, and meet and speak frequently with uh, Interim Chancellor um, Mitchelson uh, regarding ECU and its COVID issues. Um, continue to work closely with Dr. Lanker, the Board of Education, other Pitt County School staff uh, on uh, COVID-19 issues. Our communicable disease staff is in contact with school staff on a daily basis and many of those issues do get run by me uh, each day. Continue to work with Sheriff Dance and the officers of the Pitt County Detention Center on their COVID-19 outbreak and issues. Uh, we seem to, knock on wood, have that, that issue somewhat under control at this point in time. I have not heard of any new cases since last week, uh, so hopefully we are in the countdown to being able to declare that uh, outbreak over. Um, our COVID-19 community testing program, we've entered phase two of this and currently offer testing on Tuesday evenings and Thursday mornings. Uh, we do recognize that with the threat of thunderstorms and other inclement weather that sometimes we may need to suspend or cancel on short notice. I do apologize to the public for that, but we have, uh, have to think about our staff safety too. We'd really not like to have any of our employees struck by lightning uh, while standing out in the parking lot. Um, we continue to provide, or I continue to provide, a standing media availability on Wednesday mornings each week to answer media questions, mostly regarding COVID-19 issues, but sometimes regarding other issues. Um, we have been told by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services to prepare for COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, we've been told that we might receive vaccine as early as mid to late October or early November. Uh, it will be in very limited supply and there will be a clear distribution strategy provided from the federal government to the state government to us as the local health department for the ultimate administration of that vaccine. Um, we have not resumed any in-person group activities at this time. We continue to evaluate the risk of these activities and we'll resume them as soon as we can feel, feel it can be done safely. I want to run through just by, by divisions. Our health education division, led by, by Deputy Director Amy Haddam, uh, I want to mention our Pitt County Health Department uh, COVID-19 hotlines have been operational since March 17th, 2020. Um, we uh, answer many, many calls a day and they provide the negative test results to individuals from our COVID-19 testing program. Health Ed will be interviewing for a new preparedness coordinator in the very near future um, so that we can fill that uh, position that's been vacant since uh, early in the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, Personal Care Division, uh, led by Dr. Kimberly Hardy, our Director of Nursing. Uh, thank you to Dr. Hardy and her team again for their continued work on our COVID-19 testing program. This has really been a, a heavy lift uh, for the department. Um, and a lot of work on the back end. It's, it's hard enough to go out and collect the samples, but then you've got to come back and process them for the lab. Um, and then we have to call all these people with results. Um, and when you're testing 300 people a day, sometimes that's a lot of, a lot of work on the follow-up end uh, for this. Um, our vaccine preventable disease um, program is looking at new ways to improve influenza vaccination coverage uh, for this season. Uh, also reaching out to some community partners. I've had some community partners reach out to me regarding flu vaccine uh, on the drive to work this morning. I did see that uh, some of the chain pharmacies had their flu vaccination signs up already. And I would encourage all of our citizens, unless you have a clear reason not to get the flu shot, to go ahead and get a flu vaccine uh, this season and help protect yourself from that um, uh, in COVID time. Um, WIC and nutrition led by uh, Robin Tant. Uh, all of the federally uh, allowed WIC flexibilities remain in place. Our current caseload exceeds 5,000, um, which is well above our required baseline. So my, my hat's off to the, to the WIC folks for all the work that they're doing uh, to help keep, keep people fed uh, through this pandemic. Uh, environmental health, uh, we have no division director at this time. Uh, we will be interviewing candidates next week for the division director uh, position. Um, and that's all I have for you tonight, sir. <clears throat> Okay, well, very good. I'm glad that the uh, testing program has continued and 
that's supported by the county commissioners. Uh, uh, any questions or comments from the uh, board members? All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, before we go into closed session, are there any other additional comments or from the or questions from the board members? Okay, hearing none, we'll be going into closed session now, so we will sign out uh, temporarily and come back on a little bit later after we uh, finish our business in closed session. We appreciate those of you that are watching on the local TV channel for being present. Uh, and uh, like I say, we'll come back on after a short uh, recess here in closed session. We need a motion. Need a motion. Need a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to go into closed session? Uh, motion. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll just read it out. So I think someone, uh, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, Section A, Subsection 6, the board will go into closed session to discuss electing the chairman. So I think, Doctor, did you get the? Uh, got the motion. Got, got them. Okay. I can recognize a couple of voices there on the <laughs> motion in the second. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone back to the uh, remainder of the open session for the Pitt County Board of Health meeting. Uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, we've elected a new chair and vice chair for uh, the Board of Health, uh, beginning with the next uh, meeting, Dr. Adam Harrell has been elected uh, the uh, chairman of the board, board of Health and Ms. Tina Dixon as the vice chair. So uh, I want to again thank Dr. Mark Hayes for serving uh, with me as the vice chair for the past uh, five or six years. It's been a pleasure, uh, good teamwork, and we, we, we're sure the next uh, team will do just as well. So uh, is there any other business to discuss this evening? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All right. So, Betsy, if you'll do a roll call vote on the motion, please. Martha Engelke. Aye. Adam Harrell. Yay. Mark Hayes. Yay. Scott McIntosh. Yay. Kelly Pack Smith. I gave the second. Okay, thank you. And Lowell Spate. Yay. And Tina Dixon, I think I missed you. Yay. Thank you. Okay, motion approved. Uh, Meg is adjourned. Thank you very much for your attendance. <laughs>